Data collection is one of the most important processes in the determination of protein structure. The first step of data collection is the mounting of the crystals. Once a suitable crystal has been grown, it needs to be mounted in order to be visualized. However, this step can be tricky as crystals are small, fragile structures. Mounting can be done in two different ways, either at room temperature or via freezing. Room temperature mounting is the most conventional method. The crystals are mounted in a sealed, thin-walled glass capillary tube. The surrounding solution is then removed by filter paper or by pipetting. The crystal adheres to the walls of the capillary tube via surface tension and is sealed with oil, maintaining a stable environment for water vapour to be added. It is necessary that the crystals are kept in an environment saturated in water vapour, as being 50% water by volume themselves, they are sensitive to dehydration. Maintaining this humidity prevents this water from evaporating, thus avoiding crystals drying out and disordering. The crystals are mounted in an environment which has a temperature of around 4 degrees Celsius. The main advantage of room temperature mounting is that there is less damage to the crystal in comparison to freeze mounting. The main disadvantage is that crystals experience rapid radiation damage. This is comprised of two parts, a dose-dependent component due to ionization of protein in solution by X-ray photography and the more dominant, time-dependent component due to generation and propagation of free energy radicals. Some crystals last only 10 hours on a home source, which equates to approximately a minute of X-ray exposure at X25. Freeze mounting reduces radiation damage from the X-rays, in addition to noise in the Bragg's peaks caused by thermal motion. The crystal must be scooped up with a nylon loop to avoid unwanted dehydration prior to freezing. The crystal must then be coated with a cryoprotectant, such as glycerol, in order to remove as much water as possible from the surrounding solution. The crystal is then flash frozen. There are various different methods which can be used for freezing crystals, the most common being freezing with liquid nitrogen. Other methods of freezing, however, include using liquid propane, liquid freon, or a cold stream of nitrogen gas at around 100 Kelvin. Ice crystals are undesirable, as they would also diffract the X-rays and form unwanted rings on the pattern given by the detector. Flash freezing ensures that the water inside the crystal will glassify, wherein the solvent molecules do not have crystalline order, but order is maintained for the crystal in lieu of ice crystal formation. There are many advantages of freeze mounting. The first is that it is easier to store and transport frozen crystals. The radiation damage to crystals is also reduced during data collection. Even though the X-rays may ionize some of the atoms and form free radicals, these will have much less energy to move around the frozen crystal and transfer the damage. The cold temperatures used to keep the crystal frozen also reduce radiation scattering due to the background. This reduction improves signal-to-noise ratio and thus improves the resolution limit. Lastly, using frozen crystals allows for the freeze trapping of reaction intermediates. However, there are also disadvantages. As crystals are extremely fragile structures, they can be easily damaged through the process of freezing. This is why crystals are pre-soaked in a cryoprotectant prior to freezing. However, the cryoprotectant can also cause the crystal to crack, which ruins the crystal for crystallography. Successful cryoconditions are generally identified through trial and error. Today, crystals can also be mounted through automated machines. Automated mounting, along with graphical computing, have made calculating and modelling crystals much easier. Here we have a short video which demonstrates the automated mounting process. The next step is the generation of the data. The crystal must be mounted in front of the X-ray source or generator on a goniometer. This allows the crystal to be rotated with the detector remaining behind it. X-rays are then generated. 
There are two common ways to generate X-rays, producing X-rays using the bombardment of a copper anode or by using a synchrotron. In producing the X-rays with a copper anode, the anode is bombarded with electrons to produce X-rays which are 1.54 angstrom, the characteristic wavelength for copper. Using a synchrotron is the preferred alternate method. Electrons are guided around a large ring by magnets. When they bend around the circle, the electrons emit a spectrum of very intense radiation. This gives a brighter X-ray beam and also a choice of wavelengths between 0.5 angstrom and 1.6 angstroms. This can make it easier to spot high resolution reflections. Detectors are then used, which allow us to obtain the X-ray reflections from the crystal, which are used to deduce the protein structure. Detectors can traditionally be X-ray films, image plates or CCDs, charge coupled devices which are found at the synchrotron and are now increasingly more common at home. Image plates are a sensitive but cheap method which are often used in labs. However, there is a lot of noise associated with this method which is a major disadvantage comparing to CCDs. A charged coupled device measures the movement of electrical charge and is very sensitive. It produces data with the best resolution. These data collection techniques have been used in multiple research projects. They have been used extensively from the 1970s, including in the studies of viruses, such as the satellite tobacco necrosis virus. Now, onto some multiple choice questions to assess your knowledge. Question 1. For room temperature mounting, why do crystals need to be kept in an environment where they are saturated in water vapour? A because they are 50% water themselves, b, in order to adhere the crystal to the capillary tube wall, c, to replace the surrounding solution of the crystal, or d, to induce the evaporation of the water within the crystal structure. The answer is a, because they are 50% water themselves. Question 2. In terms of resolution achieved, what is the best X-ray detection method to use? A. X-ray films B. CCDs C. Image plates or D. None of the above The answer is B. CCDs Question 3. Which of the following is not an advantage of freeze-mounting crystals? A. It is easier to store and transport frozen crystals. B. Using frozen crystals allows freeze-trapping of reaction intermediates. C. Reduces the damage to the crystal in comparison to room temperature mounting. Or D. The radiation damage to crystals is reduced during data collection. The answer is C. The radiation damage is reduced, saying damage alone is too vague. Question 4. Why is the crystal mounted in front of the X-ray generator on a goniometer? A. This allows the crystal to be rotated with the detector remaining behind it. B. This allows the crystal to be held in one position with the detector remaining behind it. C. This allows the X-rays to be directed at the crystal, or D, none of the above. The answer is A. Mounting the crystal in front of the X-ray generator on a goniometer allows the crystal to be rotated with the detector remaining behind it. Question 5. How are X-rays generated? A. 
by a synchrotron or bombardment of a copper anode with electrons. B. By a synchrotron only. C. By bombardment of a copper anode with electrons only. Or D. With a goniometer. The answer is A. X-rays are generated by synchrotron or by bombardment of a copper anode with electrons. These references can direct you to sources which will help you to extend your knowledge further. This presentation, along with the video, will also be available. Thank you for listening.